Thank you. Thank you, Igor. Uh, I'm Eric. I'm Chief Information Officer at CRI, the Center um, for um, Interdisciplinary Research. And uh, Irina is uh, also presenting with me. Yes, so uh, hello, I'm Irina Nikolaeva and I'm Products Manager at CRI and uh, I'm helping with uh, on everything that's uh, online tools for learning. Uh, okay, so what is CRI? Uh, briefly, uh, we are both um, a, a department of the University of Paris uh, uh, with uh, courses from uh, all, the, all levels, uh, license, master, doctorate, uh, but also uh, courses for uh, youngsters uh, and uh, even a baby lab. So uh, uh, working with uh, babies and uh, educators from a younger age and the lifelong learning. And we're also an association, so we are uh, at the same time uh, a part of a, a, a public university, but also a, a private association. And our aim is to uh, experiment and promote new ways of learning. And uh, everything we do is linked to the United Nations uh, Sustainable Development Goals. I, I'm pretty sure you all have heard about them. So it's a, it's a very useful framework uh, to organize uh, our projects on, on learning, and uh, it uh, resonates very well with the younger generations of, uh, of uh, students who really want to add meaning to what they learn. Um, if you move to the next slide, yes. So our pedagogy is really based on, on projects on learning by doing, and uh, the, the students, they, they work as teams and uh, they are they're judged usually collectively on, on the projects that they, they, they do, uh, and meaning that they have to work uh, interdisciplinary as well a lot. And I know it's a buzzword, but for us, it's, a, it's more a, a, a real way of working. And uh, we uh, are trying to empower the students to make them actors of their learning, of um, creating new uh, new parts of the curriculum, and uh, also to work together as, as peers, but also to be mentors to each other uh, when, the, when they're good at something. And for example, a PhD would, would help the masters who would help the licensed students. Uh, and uh, last thing, which is most important in the case of uh, open education resources, is that we encourage everyone at CRE to uh, share their learning experience, both what they use to learn, what they produce to learn, uh, are, are very important. So uh, what we are trying to, to do is to, to prototype uh, uh, tools to help our learners uh, learn better together as a, as a community. So one of the most important things we're trying to, to produce is a system to match learner with uh, learning resources. Learning resources can be obviously uh, courses uh, online or, or not, but uh, people are also uh, very excellent resources to, to learn. You learn more from people than from books usually. So be them, be their um, learner, co-learners, mentors, experts. And we want people to share their projects on digital platforms so they can learn together and they can benefit from the previous projects made by our researchers or other learners. And uh, our, what the systems we want to build uh, will be able to match learners uh, with resources, with other learners, but also with possibly uh, jobs, internships. Um, and we're trying to build a common architecture for all, for all that. So moving to the next slide. Um, here you can see some uh, screenshots of, of um, uh, some of the applications we, we, we provide for this ecosystem. So a, a system we have designed to let any learner um, document their own projects very, very easily. A system on the, on the right side uh, to map knowledge and uh, uh, propose uh, recommend resources to the, to the learner, that's the one we we're gonna focus on today. And the third one on the, on, uh, the bottom of the screen is more about uh, letting people declare the skills they want to learn, what they're able to do and to match resources uh, with, the, with the learners or and to help you find uh, experts that could help you to learn. 
Um, so I'll, I'll let Irina uh, describe the, yes. the WeLearn tool. So and now we're going to focus on one, one of the tools uh, that Eric talked about, which is uh, the tool to share resources online and to organize them also. Um, so uh, the, you see a small screenshot here that consists of a map that I'll explain in a video what this map is about, and then uh, the resources that were added. So right now I'll start the video. I'm going to present to you WeLearn. I have downloaded the WeLearn plugin that is available for Chrome and Firefox. And now whenever I browse the web and I find an interesting learning resource, I can add it to my library in WeLearn. Here I uh, find the UN page on sustainable development goals interesting. So I would like to save it into WeLearn. When I click on WeLearn, we learn tries to annotate the content of the page with um, some specific concepts. So these concepts are actually Wikipedia articles. What we learn does it is that it compares the content of the page with Wikipedia articles, and it will suggest concepts that have similar content uh, as this page. So here it found that this page speaks about sustainability and more specifically about sustainable development goals. I can now modify this list of concepts. Um, for instance, sustainable development goals is very specific. I don't need the broader sustainability group, but I would like to add that it has uh, uh, been also done by UNESCO. So I would like to tag it with UNESCO. Here is the UNESCO page. And now I am happy with the way that uh, this resource is tagged by concepts and I can add it to WeLearn. If I go into my library, I will see this resource added to my list of resources. A very cool feature of WeLearn is that we can visualize resources not just like a list, but also on a 2D map. If I click on the Discover button here, I will see this map of concepts that have been used to annotate resources within the WeLearn community. So these concepts are organized here by similarity. So all concepts that will uh, that will tackle technology will be somewhere in the region around the, the technology label. And if I go up here, I'll find medicine and science, later society, and uh, geography, history, and so on. So if I zoom in a specific area, I will find more and more of uh, different concepts related to this area. So I, for instance, here I'm zooming into the society. The, and here, uh, let's say that I would like to see what are the resources related to the concept Ikigai. I click on the concept Ikigai and I see here all the resources related to this concept that have been entered by the WeLearn community. Um, what is interesting is that we can also not uh, share all the resources, but make specific thematic groups. So for instance, in the beginning of the COVID pandemic, we made a COVID-19 pandemic group, and we uh, all together shared our resources that we find, found that were quality resources. Actually, what I didn't say is that the elevation that you see here is response is uh, proportional to the number of resources in a specific area. So as you see here, most of the resources will be uh, somewhere around medicine, um, pretty logically. If I zoom into this area, I will see the different concepts that will appear. Uh, for instance, if I'm interested in disease surveillance and I click on it, I will see the resources within the COVID-19 groups that are related to disease surveillance. I can also search in the search box for more free keywords for titles and so on. If I search for COVID, um, I will probably find quite some resources here around where COVID is in the title or somewhere else. 
And very, very uh, recently, we have introduced the hashtags. Uh, so we will be able to have personal hashtags for different resources and to have personal notes for the resources. Uh, this will be uh, public very soon in the coming months. Um, so right now you can go to the WeLearn website, welearn.cree-perry.org. You can download the plugin and you can try it out for yourself. Thank you. That's it for our WeLearn. Uh, so this was the the presentation of uh, the, the uh, WeLearn plugin. So uh, as you can see, um, I'm switching back to uh, the presentation mode. Yeah. So uh, right now, uh, WeLearn can qualify any online learning resource. So it's uh, it can obviously qualify the open online learning resources, but it's not limited to it. Uh, so we can plan, we can add a filter that would uh, limit search results to OERs if you want so, but uh, we could also think about uh, actually being inspired by resources that are not OERs and um, uh, maybe see if one resource is of a specific interest, make an open uh, resource out of it, inspired by it. Um, since we are using Wikipedia ontology to view the resources and to annotate the resources with it, uh, it's really broad and covers quite some themes, but however, it also inherits of the biases. So Wikipedia is uh, still uh, um, an, well, uh, an encyclopedia that was created by uh, Western uh, white men mainly. Um, so there are still some biases in it. Uh, hopefully they will evolve also with time and we will, our tool will evolve when Wikipedia evolves. And uh, for now, the learning pro Progress is also self-declared um, and deduced from online behavior. So we do not yet have anything to actually track the progress. Um, but we learn can be used to find the best uh, open uh, the OERs and to share them within a specific group uh, of interest. Uh, you can uh, also promote the most useful resources and uh, we also are able to recognize the contributors that uh, sh share these resources or create these resources uh, in such a tool. We plan also to have a better view of who added what resource and then it will be even easier to recognize the contributors. Um, and uh, with such a tool, we can uh, identify the really good uh, online learning resources uh, that are that are worth being transferred as uh, OERs. I already said that. Uh, earlier. Yeah, but the, uh, just to, to to complete that, uh, the important point is that, uh, for example, um, national institutions could be uh, very interested into seeing who are the best uh, uh, teachers who create uh, the, the best resources. For example, in France, we, we are discussing the partnership. We have a partnership with the Ministry of Education, and and for them to be able to see what are the best resources and how to uh, uh, help the, the the teachers creating them and uh, recognize these resources and and, and make them uh, OER, it would be very very useful. So that's that's also a, a, way, a, a new way of promoting the, the best resources. So if we go on a bit, uh, just to uh, dive a bit on how it works. Um, uh, as uh, Irina said, we are using Wikipedia as an ontology. Uh, and the way it, it works is that we, we download the whole of Wikipedia, the millions of articles of Wikipedia and all its text. And we crunch this data with a, a machine learning system. And uh, once we've done that, we have a, a, a matrix, a higher dimension matrix uh, that uh, can be uh, used uh, to um, uh, analyze any text that we feed it in uh, and to see which uh, Wikipedia articles are closest to the text we feed to the system. And we are 
uh, after that, we are able to create a, a, a two-dimensional map of the whole of uh, knowledge, uh, of the human knowledge. Uh, well, if you accept that Wikipedia is an acceptable proxy for representing uh, um, uh, every human uh, knowledge bit. And uh, this system is very powerful because it means we are able to to um, uh, see similarities between any type of learning resources, be them uh, um, text, uh, uh, videos, because videos also have text attached to it, uh, people, because uh, we can deduce from their, their behavior what they're good at or from, or from what they've, they've uh, recorded as, a, uh, as a personal skills. And uh, projects, we can also analyze the text of projects and um, the skills with, which are attached by the project participants. So if we move on a bit to explain this, we are also developing a tool which is called Scales right now, just uh, the code name of the application, where people can use the same system to declare what uh, they're good at. So here you can see a profile of someone who says he's good at, is uh, competent as uh, at databases and web development, and uh, um, just curious about uh, space science. And if we move to the next slide, uh, how it works is that the person can select uh, keywords and uh, we will get in Wikipedia all the articles related to this system, to, the, to these keywords. And uh, then the person can here declare uh, what are the, the skills he, he has mastered or wants to master. If we go to the next slide. So same thing, but with uh, learning objectives. You could say uh, you're good at uh, educational technology, but you want to become an expert. So you can give yourself goals uh, for, for learning. And this can be very useful, a uh, very useful addition to WeLearn because now we can uh, uh, match your profile with uh, resources um, of things you want to learn. Uh, Okay, and we can also match people together by what they have declared as uh, things they want to learn or things they're good at, as well as uh, information uh, derived from their uh, learning behavior. If they've declared a lot of uh, resources uh, about uh, public policy, we can we would be able to to uh, infer that they are already good at public policy and could be a mentor to someone else. Okay, so uh, if we have still some time, we can uh, we can answer a few of the uh, of the questions. I can see many questions in the in, in the chat. So thank you both, Eric and uh, Irina, for sharing and uh, for sharing also the link. It's super helpful. I think that uh, all the participants here are encouraged to download the plugin and play with VLearn. Uh, it looks so super impressive. Thank you for sharing. I think Colin. I would like to start with Colin because he asked a question earlier on. Uh, he asked, can crowdsourcing help with licensing? That was the question from from Colin. So sure, uh, as we tried to, to highlight in the in the presentation, uh, crowdsourcing is very important to qualify the, the, the learning resources and especially OERs because the quality of resources can be uh, very heterogeneous. And even more than the quality is the, uh, the resource adapted to your particular need, your report to your class, if you're a teacher or to yourself. You, so our system would be very interesting because you can use uh, crowd intelligence to qualify uh, the best resources. And uh, we are convinced that leveraging both collective intelligence and artificial intelligence gives the best results. Not, not just AI or not just crowdsourcing, but both. Okay, thank you very much. And I think we have got time for one more question. And there is one from Paola Corti from Milano. Is there a risk that semantic similarity cuts off marginal perspectives or is this taken into account in instructing AI to work with resources? Or is it possible to include this kind of attention in some way also for single projects? Uh, obviously, uh, we uh, anytime you use AI, you have a risk of uh, introducing biases in the system, 
and uh, we we choose, uh, for example, to uh, use Wikipedia as the basis of our system, and we, it means we have the same problem that Wikipedia has. Wikipedia is mainly created by uh, middle-aged white males from the Western countries, for example, and it comes with a lot of biases. But uh, we can hope that it will improve in, in time, and we can build some safeguards in the system. Uh, but uh, obviously, it's a concern and it's a research area by, by itself. Okay, thank you very much. Unfortunately, we have run out of time. Uh, so thank you very much to both of you for your, for your contributions, both Irina and Eric. I have posted the link into the chat window for additional conversations. Please visit um, the Connect Spaces. Uh, uh, and also, Eric and Irina, please upload your presentation slides directly there so that people can continue engaging. The video from this session will be available to uh, shortly afterwards. Um, I would like to ask our uh, tech support to please stop the recording.